Hello and welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on the different proteins that form a sarcomere. First, I'm going to do a quick recap on the structure of a skeletal muscle. Muscles are made up of fascicles, which are bundles of muscle fibers. The muscle fibers are made up of myofibrils, and the myofibrils consist of myofilaments. The myofilaments are of two kinds, thick and thin filaments, which interdigitate. It's the regular arrangement of these filaments in skeletal muscles that creates alternating dark and light bands on the muscle fibers. The dark A bands are formed by the thick filaments, and the light I bands have just the thin filaments. At the center of the A band is a pale H zone, and in the middle of that is a dark M line. The thin filaments attach to a dark Z disc or Z line. So the structure between two Z discs is called a sarcomere, and there are multiple sarcomeres in a muscle fiber. During a muscle contraction, this sarcomere shortens. That happens when the thin filaments slide over the thick filaments. That's the sliding filament theory. Let's look at the filaments. So the thick filaments are made up of myosin molecules, and in skeletal muscle, that's mostly myosin type 2. Myosin is a molecular motor protein. Each molecule has two heavy chains and four light chains, so it has a total of six polypeptide chains. The two heavy chains coil around each other and that forms the tail of the myosin molecule. Each chain then folds to form globular heads. The light chains include two essential light chains and two regulatory light chains. The regulatory chains regulate the ATPase activity of myosin. In between the heads and the tail is a hinge region, so that the heads can bend when they're attached to actin. That's how they pull the actin filaments inward, shortening the sarcomere. The molecules are arranged in anti-parallel directions, such that they attach at the M line in the center. So there are no myosin heads towards the central portion of the thick filament. The tails of the myosin molecules are towards the center of the filament, and the heads extend outwards at angles in all directions, so multiple myosin molecules form a thick filament. The myosin heads have ATPase activity because they convert ATP to ADP and use the energy to move the thin filament. They also have an actin binding site to obviously bind to actin, which forms the thin filament. So the thin filament has actin, in addition to tropomyosin and troponins. The actin filaments are made up of globular actin units, or G-actin, which polymerize to form F-actin filaments. Two filaments wind around each other to form the thin filament. They have sites that bind myosin, so that when the two bind, the actin filaments slide over the myosin filament, shortening the sarcomere. If we look at it schematically, the sliding of the actin filaments like this shortens the sarcomere. Actin and myosin are thus the contractile proteins of the muscle. These binding sites on the actin filament are usually covered by tropomyosin, so it prevents actin and myosin from attaching. Only if tropomyosin is moved out of the way can actin and myosin bind. So it's a regulatory protein and it forms a part of the thin filament. The second regulatory protein is troponin. There are three types, and together they form a troponin complex. Troponin I, T, and C. The letter tells you everything you need to know. Troponin T binds to tropomyosin. Troponin I inhibits actin and myosin's interaction by binding to actin. And troponin C binds to calcium. So what does troponin do? If we assume this is actin, with its binding site for myosin, and this is the head of myosin with a binding site for actin. Tropomyosin covers the binding sites on actin. When calcium binds to troponin C, that creates a conformational change, moving tropomyosin out of the way so that actin and myosin can bind. So you can see how it's super important for the contraction to happen. Tropomyosin and troponins form the regulatory proteins. These are the most important proteins, but there are other structural proteins or accessory proteins as well. 
There are lots of them with lots of different names, like Titan. This attaches myosin to the Z disc. It's like a spring, so it stabilizes the position of myosin in the sarcomere. There's alpha actinin, which attaches the thin filaments to the Z disc. And there are lots more like that, nebulin, desmin, etc. Overall, they help support the structure of the sarcomere. So when the sarcomere shortens, what happens to the bands? The A band is the thick filament, which doesn't move, so it doesn't change in dimensions. The I band, on the other hand, will shorten. The Z discs will come closer together. The M line won't move, and the H zone will shorten. What starts the process of contraction is calcium binding to troponin C. For the calcium levels in the sarcoplasm to rise, we need an action potential to excite the muscle membrane. The way these two processes work together is called excitation-contraction coupling. And that's the structure of a sarcomere. If this video helped you, you can give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.